Spring and Easter items are out in full force at the Dollar Tree. Here are a few new craft ideas for 2024 that I've been working on. We're going to make a pillow cover, a decorative tray, and even some mini signs. So let's get making. This year I spotted these bunny pillow covers at Dollar Tree. They just have a little silhouette of a bunny and I thought I would try to jazz it up with some chenille yarn also from Dollar Tree. So bear with me, I saw this on Instagram, a very similar idea where you wrap your yarn around a dowel or something. Because my yarn was so thin, I used a thicker dowel so I'd get big enough loops. My first couple tries I wrapped the yarn too tight around the dowel so it was tricky to cut off so I, as you'll see the tutorial go along it gets easier for me but just add a thick line of hot glue there and then you can slice right across the top of that yarn. Like I said this will get easier as it goes along. I'm sorry normally I try to make my tutorials as clean as possible and I try to know going in what I'm going to do or uh, I try to do a test run if I'm unsure and that did not happen on this and I only bought one pillow cover so you guys get to see how the sausage is made and I'm sorry about that. So I really struggled on this first one but then it got easier and you just make lines of these loops that will then fill in the entire silhouette of the bunny. And so I'll just speed this up and let you guys watch as I kind of fill this in. And then you'll just want to make sure to, as you go down the length of the bunny, make your rows of loops, you know, longer or shorter to then match the shape of the rabbit. And then once everything was filled in, I came back with my scissors and I just kind of trimmed any pieces that seemed too long or out of place and tried to give that rabbit a little bit more shape. And then of course, this was really messy yarn, so give it a real good shake. Then I just grabbed some ribbon from the craft store. It's got this little row of pom-poms on it, as well as this fabric glue that dries super quick, which is perfect for someone with little to no sewing skills like myself. So I just flipped the pillowcase over and glued right on the edge, and I made sure that that ribbon stuck out enough that the pom-poms would be showing on the front side of the pillow and then work your way all the way around. And then that was it. Here is my updated version of a Dollar Tree bunny pillow cover. Super excited with how this turned out and I only used one roll of yarn so this was pretty much like a $4 project. Start with a wooden egg cut out either a door hanger or a stand and then 
grab some decorative spring napkins. These are from Dollar Tree and we're gonna make a little Easter egg decor. So you would think I would have learned my lesson by now. Of course, I tried to just rip the price tag off the back of that egg, it did not work for me. So I grabbed my heat gun, he gave it a blast of heat and then peeled that label right off. So you can see here we're using the back of the egg, not the patterned 3D carved side, but just the smooth back because we're gonna Mod Podge some napkins onto this wooden egg. So grab some matte Mod Podge, I prefer matte on these projects, and give just a solid coat all over that flat surface of that egg. And then here's the kicker, do not apply your napkin right away, let the Mod Podge dry completely because once that Mod Podge is dried, you're gonna add your napkin. So I stuck a sanding block, which I will use later, underneath that egg just so it would lay flat and grabbed my gingham or buffalo check, whatever, napkin, it was two ply, so you peel away all but the top printed ply. And because that Mod Podge is dry, you can move that napkin around and place it exactly how you want it. So I just trimmed off that perforated edge with the tiny little dots. So I was only working with the smooth part of the napkin. And then I smoothed that napkin over the egg, protected the napkin piece with a piece of parchment paper, not wax paper, but parchment paper. And then I used my mini heat press. This will just reactivate the Mod Podge so that the napkin adheres to the wood surface smoothly without any wrinkles or bubbles. If you do not have any sort of like heat press tool, an iron on a low heat setting with no steam would work just fine as well. And then once that was totally smoothed down, I grabbed that sanding block and I sanded away the edges until all of the excess piece of napkin was removed. From here, you're gonna add another solid coat of matte Mod Podge to the entire surface, just so you have an even finish. Heads up, the napkin piece will probably start to bubble a bit or wrinkle a bit. So I recommend starting in the center and using brush strokes that then move toward the outer edge of the egg just to prevent ripping or moving your napkin piece too much. But don't worry, we'll reseal it and it'll be smooth again after we add the second piece of napkin. So here is this happy spring napkin. I just took my craft scissors and I cut as close to the wreath as I possibly could. So it was kind of like a wavy little outline of the wreath. And then from there, peel away that second ply of the napkin so you only have the top ply and then you can center your cutout napkin piece on your project. And then once again, grab that parchment paper and your heat press and heat seal everything in place. And this is your opportunity to remove any extra wrinkles or bubbles from that second coat of Mod Podge. But that's it, now you have two layers of napkin with two different patterns. Then I just finished off this project because there was a wooden base. I had some greenery from Dollar Tree and I just ripped off some of the stems and hot glued them right in place. Pretty easy. And then here's my finished little Easter egg standing sign.
Grab a silver serving tray from the party supply aisle as well as a sheet of seasonal window clings. I grabbed these happy Easter ones. Just start with your heat gun and peel that label off the back of the serving tray because we will paint both sides just for a more finished project. Then take everything outside and give it a coat of white spray primer front and back. So one side, let it dry, flip it over, other side, let it dry. As you can see, it doesn't have to be perfect coverage, just something for your chalk paint to stick to. And then, like I said, I painted both the back and front. I'm only gonna show you me painting the front because the back is boring, but this is folk art chalk paint in the color French blue, which I thought paired really well with these window clings. So just a one inch flat paintbrush and full coverage on the whole silver tray. A little tricky with that ridged border, but nothing too serious, just full coverage. I was able to do one good coat and then just touch up so I didn't have to do a full second coat with this paint. And then once that had dried, it's time to add your window cling. So first we're gonna dry fit it. I'm just using that Happy Easter wreath and I'm gonna trim off a little bit from the top and a little bit with, from the bottom just because there's no way I'm gonna be able to get that window cling to stick over that scalloped edge. So that's where I want the wreath to stop. So once you're happy with the way that it's trimmed down to size, pull out your matte Mod Podge and give a nice coat all over where the window cling is gonna be. I would err on the side of going with a thinner coat of Mod Podge versus thicker on this type of project. But once you have your Mod Podge in place, then smooth your window cling, start in the center and then smooth outwards. The nice thing is you can kind of see where the air bubbles are, so smooth them all out. And this might take a little bit. Also, it's gonna take a good 24 hours for that Mod Podge underneath the window cling to dry and turn clear. So if you kind of keep an eye on it as time goes by, you can watch it and see like, oh, there's a bubble there and like smooth it out as time goes by until that Mod Podge is fully dried. And then also seal it with a coat of Mod Podge over everything just to protect your paint finish. And go ahead and let that dry. And then this step is optional. I just used a little bit of white chalk paint, very dry brush technique, and I just kind of brushed some along the edges to distress it a little bit. I think this would also look really nice with like a navy blue paint to distress it darker instead of lighter, but whatever you like. And feel free to use whatever color chalk paint that you like that suits your window cling that you choose. But then here is my finished little tray, perfect. You can prop it up on a shelf or you can set it out on a table, a cute little Easter craft. Usually every spring the dollar store and even craft stores have these little wood die cut ornament pieces that you can make all sorts of crafts with. So for this one, we're gonna make some specimen art. First, I grabbed just a piece of scrap wood. It's like five by seven piece of scrap wood. It was from the Dollar Tree, but use whatever scrap wood you got. Paint it with plain white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. And then grab some of these carrot ornaments. You're gonna need 12 of them. I initially thought I'd paint some solid dark orange, but I realized quickly that was way too dark, so then I started playing around and mixing white paint with my dark orange to get the color that I liked, and then with each row that went up, I just added a little bit more white paint so that it was lightest, medium, dark. Kind of like Goldilocks, I guess. But my paint colors here are Folk Art Matte Paint in Olive Green, also Canyon Sunset for the dark orange and Wicker White for the white, but really any dark green, dark orange and white would work for this, even just cheap acrylic craft paint. 
And then once I had the carrots painted to my liking, I went in with the green with more of a fine point paintbrush because I wanted to get that detail where the carrot top meets the carrot itself. And then I just did the same thing. I did darker green mixed with a little bit of white for the bottom row, mixed with even a little bit more white for the middle row and then the lightest on the top. And I also didn't try very hard to completely blend the green and the white paint because that gave my little carrot tops a little bit more texture and dimension, which I thought looked nicer. Then it was time to make a frame for my little wooden painted piece of scrap wood here. So just nautical jute rope from Dollar Tree. Make sure you cut off the plastic part at the end, twist the end before you hot glue it so it doesn't fray, and then add a line of hot glue working in sections all the way around your piece of scrap wood. And then when you get back to where you started, cut that end but kind of hold it and twist it so that it doesn't fray and then hot glue that end piece in place as well. Then your carrots, I just dry fit them in place, kind of set them in place the way you think you like them, evenly spaced, then grab some wood glue, just regular old wood glue and a paintbrush, and you're gonna just add a dab of wood glue to the back of each carrot to set them in place. And then you can kind of, because the wood glue doesn't dry instantly, you can kind of tweak and adjust the carrots as needed so that they're perfectly evenly spaced the way you like them. And then that's it. So once the wood glue is dried, after a couple hours, you can display your new specimen art. And here are my little carrots in an ombre pattern. Next up, you wanna grab a little wood box. This is from Dollar Tree. Just any sort of unfinished wood box or even a picture frame would work. I've done this with Easter eggs and picture frames before. Just paint everything white. Once again, that plain white Rust-Oleum chalk paint or whatever white paint you got on hand. Then you're gonna grab some of these little bunny cutout ornaments and we're gonna paint them in three different colors. So for this, my paint colors are folk art home decor chalk paint in the color sage. And then the other two are folk art matte paints in the color gentle violet and mossy meadow. I kind of go back and forth between the chalk paints cause that's what they have at my Hobby Lobby and then the matte paints because that's what they have at the Michaels, which is closer to my house. But either way, just give a first coat of paint and then rinse your brush and then do the next color and then rinse your brush and then do the next color and then go back and do a second coat. Just because I don't know what was going on with these bunnies, but it seemed like the unfinished wood really soaked in a lot of the paint. So on these, I had to do a second coat, no big deal. And then you'll also see on the left hand side of the screen here when I tested my colors because I wasn't sure what color combination I wanted to do. I used some Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower Jenga pieces to test like eight different colors of chalk paint. And then I finally settled on these three. And then once the paint had dried, set the bunnies right inside that wooden box. Space them evenly however you like. And then once again, grab your wood glue and a paintbrush, add a dab, a generous dab of glue on the back of each bunny and set them in place. And then before you set it aside to dry, make sure that everything is spaced evenly the way you like it. And once that glue had dried, I just added a one inch natural fiber ribbon. I ordered this in a set of three, so three different widths of the same ribbon from Amazon. And I think it's really beautiful. So I will link to it below. And then I just tied it with a knot at the top and secured that knot with a dab of hot glue. 
And then I also made a bow. So you make one loop and then two loops and then you tie them in a knot. So I call it my bunny ears bow. And then you kind of pull the two tail ends down. Cut those two tail ends at a 45 degree angle. And then I just ended up adding a tiny dab of hot glue to the front edge of that wooden box just so that my tail ends would hang down nicely. But then here's my little Easter Bunny specimen art kind of shadow box craft. And then here are my two finished crafts together. And here are all of my finished projects. I do hope you enjoyed watching these Easter crafts come together. Until next time, happy making.